there and welcome to ever. Oh, for fuck's sake. I mean, I mean, that's got to be a record. That has Have to be a record. Have you been in the cockpit of a plane? They wear these. What? Is yeah, I have, yeah, I got invited they by do. pilot once. That sounds weird. No, it doesn't. Mm. I got invited why all the time. I, why do I, you worked in? I bet well, you why do I do this? Yeah. Episode one hundred and sixty-one of the ADH. But yeah. fucking Jesus Christ! God, he's very oh, angry James. today. Isn't Busy he? people. Here. Oh my God! Yeah, one yeah, of yeah. the pictures isn't straight. Can you can you cope with it not being straight while distract we're recording me. this distract podcast? Me. Uh, well, if you listen to what I'm saying, maybe you can focus mm. on that. Have you got any other the... distractions? No, no. Anything else? Uh, Come on, James. 61 of the ADHD adults podcast. Apparently, something. How the hell we got this far? I don't know. It's ridiculous. Anyway. I'm James Brown, the man who doesn't even have the motivation to turn into a bat most of the time. And I'm joined by Dr. Alex Connor, whose only motivation is to identify and record woodpecker sightings and Mrs. Hearings. ADHD. This is going to be one of those episodes, isn't it? Mm. It really is. And, and Mrs. ADHD, who thought this was an episode about rotavators, so ordered two off Amazon. <laughs> Alex, hi. A you, you, things that put little holes in the grass, so you put it over so it gets uh, the no, rain. I'm all right, I'm all right, thanks. Okay, amazing. Alex, some, something, anything. Mo money, motivation. <laughs> Not hello. So it's, this is, I mean, I know that I sometimes am negative about this podcast. This, everything else. this is a mm. fucking car crash. <laughs> 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 yes. Thank you. Thank you. Anyway, how are you both? This is ADHD first. I don't know. Mm. Sorry. How about you? No. No. And um, the other one, you. I'm excellent. Thank you both. Excited to be here as always. I've done a buttoned up shirt. You can't see it because it's an audio medium, but I have. Um, yeah. Although we've got a metrics guy sending me graphs and stats and the breakdown of list listener figures, and I'm just accidentally deleting all of my Instagram messages. That's the level of IT. Um, somebody brilliantly said, oh, have you deleted all your emails as well? Because you don't answer those. And I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, I'm just <laughs> shy. That one stung a bit. One of whom has sent us a letter. What? That that doesn't make sense in it. What? That's right, James. It's from a. Oh, I just got a check. <laughs> it's from a Robert from Kidderminster. It says, "I listened to your episode on body doubling. James's body doubles in size every single night, not because he changes from a bat to a Dracula, but because he has to pretend he's really big to frighten off the monsters Ding. under his bed." <laughs> he, he goes on to write. That joke was going to be about binge eating, but I had a moment of clarity on the optics of that. <laughs> Thanks, Robert. It's a really helpful self-edit. <laughs> cheers, Dad. <laughs> yeah, cheers. I'm glad he picked that one up. You would have been. How do I tune you both down? What? Um, what? <laughs> it's well, very loud in no. my ears. Mm. Right. Just say no. Did, uh, with a proposition. Yeah, that'll do. <laughs> you, you know, you, you, right. The black box that's next to you, does that have a volume control on it for output? Or if you look on your laptop where there's... I, I can't believe I'm having to explain this on Oh, the yeah, you're right. Yes, right. We'll put you. it out in post, James. It'll be fine. <laughs> Carry on. That's better. I've had a Hang real on, one. Ten. Can I read it out? Yes, please. James, you know we're recording later than we normally do. And you know the um, yeah. half-life of Sam's meds? <laughs> <laughs> we need to have that conversation. We really do, don't we? <laughs> it's from a Nancy in the good old US of A. I don't know if you've Hi, a Nancy. It says, Gunk Nancy. I am a new listener. As I, at 53, was just diagnosed with ADHD, I watched my now grown children go through their ADHD journeys, but never really thinking I had it as well. Recent therapy sessions made me realize I may have it. I had my assessment and it was confirmed. If anyone's skeptical of that, because it's massively hereditary, if you've got a kid, they're 50% likely to have it around that. 
Mm. So, yeah, massively not surprising, Nancy. I am due for my medical appointment in a few days, my medicine appointment, sorry. Your podcast has been very helpful and educational. I think this letter might have gone to the wrong podcast. <laughs> it says, I find myself talking back to you guys, saying, yes, that's what I do. Thank you for your wisdom, tips and humour as I embark on this new chapter in my life, Nancy. Absolutely lovely. Thank you, lovely, Nancy. Lovely, lovely. Yeah, not a lot else to say, is there, but thank you. As usual, Tarquin, the metrics in intern, has uh, stopped the second chucker. Because he was in a chucker. I don't know what chucker is. I, I googled what are the bits of polo. Because <laughs> he plays polo with Sal Sam's rich dad. To tell us some information about another city we've got listeners in, the wonderful city of Charlotte in North Carolina. Where we know we have one listener, as we had a letter which was brilliant, and which, quite frankly, confused us all, which isn't hard. Ding. Ding. So according to Tarquin, the, the Wi-Fi was invented in Charlotte when a local resident called Noah accidentally microwaved a potato alongside a spoon <laughs> creating the world's first. That's ridiculous. <laughs> that so stupid. <laughs> That's the most ridiculous one. I love that one. Chapeau, James. Look how small he's the world's first wireless internet connection and the disappointingly undercooked potato. <laughs> That's a good one. Isn't it? A oh, man. So stupid. Yeah. What did you make all of Thanks that? Thanks for that. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. Anyway, trying to have some semblance of structure and movement as usual this plumbing system which requires you to put your shitty toilet paper in a bin instead of flushing it of a podcast mm. is a tragedy in three parts we choose a theme last time around was about adhd and body doubling and this week we're going to be discussing something that's very closely related and that's adhd and motivation thank you to Asta alana for suggesting this topic or something vaguely like it jesus christ as usual this plumbing system which requires you to put your shitty toilet paper in a bin instead of flushing it of a podcast is a tragedy in three parts. We choose a theme. Last week was about ADHD and body doubling. And this week we're going to be discussing the related subject of ADHD and motivation. Thank you to Asta Alana for suggesting the topic or something that was vaguely like it. The three parts include the Bill Oddie of evidence, Alex the Psycho. Hello. Education monkey talking about the theme and in part two we'll give our personal reflections and massive big swinging tips on education not education that's the, wrong it's in the script yes. this could not be going better honestly <laughs> i can't imagine an element of this podcast which could be improved on motivation and then we'll answer the questions that have been sent in in the final section which is still imaginatively called your questions even though several people have told me something else to call it and i've forgotten oh, so oh, alex so, Alex, mm. motivate our listeners to carry on listening. A gold chance of that. <laughs> right. Like that. What is motivation? Well, let me tell you. It is obviously a pretty complex psychological phenomenon that drives people to take an action <laughs> in order to achieve summit. Doesn't matter what, whatever that goal or task is. It is that guiding force internally that initiates and keeps maintained a behavior, a, be a goal-oriented behavior. And it's very closely related to reward. Most really, motivation is like uh, an, a, an, a behavior because of the feelings of reward we have. Reward often gives us the motivation to engage with activities. Don't, don't, you did this last, you did this last week. Don't Jokes ruin you. my bit. Nope. Wasn't going to. Wasn't going to mention the thing. Still won't. You've gone prematurely there and not for the first time, according to Sam's friends. There are many different theories and models that attempt to explain how motivation works. It's multifaceted, and that's that's why, really, because of the different ways that motivation can work, there's a bunch of different theories, and psychologists can't agree on anything anyway. At a very basic level, motivation can be separated into intrinsic, internal motivation. I do this because I want to. And extrinsic or external motivation, I do this because I'm going to get applauded. Intrinsic motivation arises from within because it is rewarding to them. They feel it. 
commonly, this is, you know, hobbies, activities that don't need overt external rewards for some people. And this blows our tiny minds. It could even be their job. Their job <laughs> could give them intrinsic <laughs> rewards. Incredible. Sam reminds me of Mark Twain quote. I haven't got time for it. Uh, <laughs> extrinsic motivation involves performing an activity or task Ding. to earn a reward or avoid criticism, ding in James's case, or punishment, ding in my case. Ding. <laughs> These motivations come from outside the individual. Ding. 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 <laughs> if motivation comes from reward, is dopamine involved? I'm a thick pig face chipped with barnacles on my feet. <laughs> Yes. So the answer, James, is yes, she will read anything we write in the script for her. Yeah. Go. James, that's Fuck amazing. <laughs> a thick, big face chode with barnacles on my feet. Yeah. Incredibly yeah. erudite question, Sam. You should take notes, James. That's how you think of a question and ask it. Correct, Sam. Yes, dopamine has a very crucial role in motivational control, or rather dopamine activity, I guess we should say. Learning mm -hmm. what things in the world are good and bad and choosing actions to engage with the good things and avoid the bad things. This is learning-based behavior. And dopamine, other transmitters are available, isn't just about pleasure and reward, but also about learning, learning what to do, what not to do. Like a podcast with you two, you said, or rather, the script, the script intern wrote that there are multiple yeah. theories, <laughs> theories yeah. about motivation. So, what are they, and why won't you quit this podcast? <laughs> That's a... <laughs> That's really you were on fire part. with this script. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. If you're patient, intelligent like Sam, then what you could do is wait. For my bits. I'm going to get to that. And you'd also be able to spell theories, just saying. The internal, external, I like saying intrinsic and extrinsic because it makes me feel mm. smug. The, the intrinsic and extrinsic motivation theory has been adapted into the self-determination theory, which, and if people out there are thinking hypothesis, that you're right, James wrote theory, which focuses on the degree to which an individual's behavior is governed by self-motivation and therefore self-determined. It emphasizes the importance of intrinsic motivations and the conditions that allow us to foster those intrinsic motivations, autonomy, competence, relatedness, uh, safety, all those things. So the, the same thing then? Do you listen to any of this, James? Any of it? Just sit there thinking Not. about, what is it, Derek Bowie? Bowie? I don't even know. I don't even know. How to get it wrong. That's how little I care about Derek. <laughs> well, well, you've got a vacant face offending people on YouTube. I'm doing some psychoeducation. No, James, it's not the same. This hypothesis, James, introduces those extra elements of, <laughs> of autonomy, so freedom and independence to think and drive our actions, and competence, ability, and relatedness, which we may or may not come back to later on. I mean, it's unlikely, isn't it? We'll see. We might not forget. Another approach proposed by, and we had to check this wasn't a made-up name, Victor Vroom. <laughs> Victor Vroom. Love that name. Love it. Came up with, that's just amazing, the expectancy <laughs> theory of motivation. And that means individuals are motivated to act, uh, motivated to act in ways that they perceive will give them the outcome they want. Whether it does or not, it is based on three components. Short, boring list, klaxon coming your way. This is Victor Room's three components. <laughs> the expectancy, that's the belief and the expectation that they'll get what they want out of doing something. Instrumentality, ding. It's not sexual, it's just an instrument. <laughs> and that's the belief that doing something, a performance, will lead to certain outcomes. And valence which is the value of those outcomes to the individual. So you might expect to get an outcome if you do something. You might believe that the performance will give you. But if you don't care, you're still not going to be motivated to do it. There are, of course, others. But this bit's quite frankly boring enough. So we will stop there. What about ADHD? 
How dare you <laughs> ask you my question? You literally wrote that down for me. <laughs> One of us did. Excellent question, Sam. And time perfectly. Good. Well, I mean, I don't, we, should, we, we should always ask about ADHD in these bits, I think. Well, let me tell you. There is evidence that suggests people <laughs> living with ADHD, James, are more likely to have a motivation. No, no, no. Not a motivation. <laughs> A motivation, all one word, no motivation. And that is obviously a less, a, a none or a reduction in motivation to start a goal, to carry on with a goal, any kind of goal directed behavior. I mean, that's us, right? We rely more on intrinsic motivation, intr extrinsic. Did I say intrinsic then? I meant you to did, say yeah. extrinsic, yeah. as in we rely on sort of external factors much, much more, and we're less able to respond to intrinsic motivation. A bit like we talked about in body doubling last mm. week. This right. probably reflects that people with ADHD need a greater incentive to change their behavior, even in from task to task, but also generally in life. CBT doesn't work very well, as we know. And they might fo find postponing gratification. In fact, they do find postponing gratification ding, ding. challenging. According to a study only a year or so ago, Motivation levels in people with ADHD are improved when their needs of autonomy, so feeling that they have control, have a choice, and their relatedness, so connected, being connected to other people, having a sense of belonging in their environment, and competence, mastery, successfulness, being good at that activity. When those three things are met, then people have with ADHD might have more motivation. See, James, we did come back to those three things. But we do get stuff done if we have a deadline. Well, I do anyway. James doesn't. Why? What an excellent question, Sam. And can I say perfectly asked again? Thank you. Yeah, some of us do, not all of us. Um, you would know if we had done an episode on pro procrastination. It's unbelievable we have, that we haven't. 21. Yeah, um, I know. <laughs> that's that's no, another error in the script. script. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> James genuinely put that. It's funny that we haven't done one. <laughs> yeah, we definitely have. Procrastination is among the most common of motivational failures. Putting off, engaging with any task, really, or procrastination also includes persistence or perseverance with the task, despite even if we know it will be worse if we put it off. We still struggle, Sam, with perseverance. <laughs> Learned that word this week perseverance yeah i know this is a psychological concept called temporal motivation theory and time is a critical motivational factor in all humans the, the further away it is the less motivated we are instant gratification society is not new that's all humans mm. problem is us buggers have it worse again our time blindness also introduces a reduced ability to visualize any kind of linear future James, for example, absolutely despises future James and current me. <laughs> so you've got to fit your various deadlines into future you, which is hard to see, and then find the motiv Ding! motivation to engage. Oh, yeah. To fit it into. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Late ding. So you've got to find that motivation to engage in an under-rewarding activity, and your brain isn't seeing that that's ever going to happen in some kind of hypothetical future, and you don't have a grasp of what it means. That means we often work hyperbolically. And that is the closer we get to a deadline, the more motivated and usually by negative self-hatred and the anger and the, so the negative motivating factors still extrinsic, we are to work on a related task. So mo time, mo procrastination, it seems. Well, I've got to admit, I'm motivated to stick Wesley Warren Jr.'s testicles in my ears after listening to that. We'll be back for our personal reflections and He's the man who had the biggest testicles in history. We'll be back oh. for our personal reflections and tips um, after Sam says bye and Alex says no. See you in a bit. No. No. Bye. She just said bye. <laughs> Fucking hell. Alex, hi. Hi. What's up? Hello, Governor. Welcome back to the ADHD Adults Podcast. This is episode 161, where we're talking about ADHD and motivation. Well, Alex is. Um, James, you're first on the script. Go. <laughs> uh, 
Mavs? No. Uh, it's an odd one for me. I, I'm an odd person. It's an odd one. Ding? Yeah, well, I will take it. Ding. Um, I can remember when I started meds. I can't remember a lot in my life, but I can remember very vividly that motivation or increased motivation was the first thing I noticed on uh, Lizdex or Alvance. 20 milligrams, nothing. 30, nothing. 40, I, I started to feel all the motivation to do stuff and improve mood a bit as well. Before medication, fear and self-loathing motivated me. That was my the driving force to do anything was the fear that I, I was going to be shown up for the completely useless sack of potatoes that I am. And just the self-loathing of you know, fucking useless that would make drive me to do stuff, these maladaptive um, motivations. I did things because of like seventh Dan Blackbart level imposter syndrome. This utter, utter conviction that particularly when I went to Warwick and first worked with you, this wasn't to do with you because I knew you were thick, but the utter conviction that somebody was going to put their hand on my shoulder and say, sorry, why did we employ you? You're yeah. useless. And that just stayed with me through our academia. And it was a big motivator of just trying to do everything because I didn't want people to know I was shit. Now, after diagnosis and with medication, and I'm sure Sam will say this is complete bollocks, uh, most things I can summon motivation for. Actually, most things work-wise and around the house and, and kind of task-wise, as long as I'm not in a bipolar low, I can summon motivation for apart from emails. I, I, I can't. I don't know what it is. Uh, you know, obviously, we've just we've talked about reward, etc. I understand its importance. Uh, part of it is that I have put barriers in place and protect myself, but it's got worse. And I now either have to sit with Sam in the morning and body double or use ding. one of our Patreon body doubling sessions as a tool. Ding, ding. And then it's done in a fucking jiffy. Ding. You know, like it, it, takes, <laughs> it takes no time at all, but it's, it's that just utter barrier of see there's 36 emails and I know I can answer them in 20 minutes, but nah, I'm not going to. It's that, that old chestnut of put something off for days and then it's done in three minutes. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> Double, triple ding. Exactly. So it it's something that I, I absolutely feel and understand. And it's odd. It's a little bit like RSD. We talked about this earlier. I have these really specific and relatively rare things for RSD. It's the same for motivation. Most things I'm fine, but it's just one thing. Can't do it. Are you a seventh Dan Black Belt in actual anything useful, though? Uh, binge eating. Uh, That's yeah, not useful, cool. is it? No, really. I suppose useful for the local local economy of takeaway restaurants, I imagine, and, and people who make. And, and what were you like? What are you like off meds? What are you? What's the? Because my my meds help me motivate. This is this is. We've talked about this before, actually. When I said I don't think I'm that everything. inattentive. No, I, I don't. I don't know. There are days when I don't take meds when I've had to stockpile if I've had a migraine, etc. I don't know. I I think I probably am less motivated, but you know, metacognition everything else yeah. going on I, I don't know and i don't really want to find out to be fair because the person i was before bathing himself in the excrement of fear and self-loathing isn't a person i want to spend a lot of time with anyway i'm going to get to my tip ding because alex counted how many minutes i spoke for in a recent episode obviously Whoops. just to point out that yes so that i rigged yes it's okay to need external accountability to motivate you. I hear this yes. so much in the people that I coach that I don't want to rely on, you know, external accountability. I don't want to have to rely on other people. But it's it's okay because we have a lack of motivation. It's the way in which the reward center in your brain works. It's not, you know, it's not wonderful to not feel like a proper adult because you might need somebody to help you. But it's okay to use external accountability to motivate you if it's not fear. That yes. maladaptive approach of I'm doing it because I'm scared. So it's external accountability, but I'm scared. I'm, I'm fear. That's not healthy for you. But using external accountability that could be your partner, it could be a work colleague, people you body double with that understand you, that's healthy. Yeah. We want to be motivated, but it's okay to need a trusted person or to use body doubling to provide that accountability. Forgive yourself. Don't measure yourself against you know, the yardstick of people who have magically got motivation for work mm. weirdos yeah sam what about you oh yeah um 
I, <laughs> how are you doing? Um, yeah, I, I've always been pretty motivated, actually. But when you were just doing yours then, I realised it, it is because of that imposter syndrome and low self-esteem. I've, I've always just tried so hard to prove to everybody that I'm not a complete pile of shit because I knew internally that I was and I had to just work so much harder it seems than everybody else to just get stuff done and feels like I have to work much longer it takes me anyway I'm getting off subject but when I hit perimenopause that I couldn't do anything what I couldn't do anything I just, apart from sit on my phone and play stupid games all the time, I just, and, and, and loathe myself even more than usual, which I didn't think was possible, but it turns out mm. it was, I broke a world record for it. Um, and yeah. And, Challenge and Carter, accepted. <laughs> <laughs> HRT and meds sorted that right out and I'm super motivated even more so than ever before um I can't always do the thing I need to be doing but I'm literally not literally but I literally am always doing something <laughs> but the thing that I can't do is phone calls or speaking to people in general I do not like that at all so they're mm. the things that will literally stay on my not literally but literally stay on my <laughs> to-do list for years sometimes and oh, blood tests, I've been, I've, well I've been trying to get a blood test for since August last year I think I went through this in the last one didn't I <clears> at the <throat> end of it maybe, hit, maybe yeah, it it. I don't know what about you Alex I can't you have, if, just before we move on to Alex do you have a tip because this is personal <laughs> reflections and, and tips on motivation specifically not on things yeah, you yeah, can't yeah, do yeah 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 exactly <laughs> 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 um, I don't know. If you've got one or you don't know any? Can't think. I haven't thought okay. about it. I didn't realise I had to do that. I was really proud of myself that I wrote something in this. No, you, listen, chapeau for that, madame. Yeah, I'm amazed. We've, we, cha we changed a few episodes ago to the second part being personal reflections and tips. So it's not, yeah. you know, outside the realms of feasibility that you might expect that a tip is going to be introduced in. and can well, i add well. that Ooh, yeah. <laughs> where you've written the bit in the script sam you deleted the word sam's reflection and tip did i yeah yeah it's always in there see so if you put you put you type that in instead of it yeah anyway moving on to somebody who might be more useful in this part i don't know probably <laughs> not alex <laughs> probably not yeah no motivation absolute fucking nightmare I'm... I've always done stuff like Sam thing, I guess. Um, <laughs> but never the thing I'm supposed to be doing. It's just always been that problem of motivated to do something else. And even if I had did manage to do that one thing for work, usually for negative extrinsic pressure, it's so fucking fragile, that motivation. Mm. Like, yeah, look around, he's gone. And I've just bought all the kit for mountain climbing or whatever. And I never, ever do it again. It's relentless and painful and difficult and and i've pretty much got it far more under control now i'll tell you quickly why i've done that and it's it's a, a positive lens and it's a self-fulfilling circle so the first thing is to acknowledge what i am and that was really important not a wanker james don't let's me no a circle um, jerk somebody with adhd <laughs> and then to start to, to accept that and see it as a positive lens and then getting um, the medication and getting help for my alcohol use disorder meant there was less anxiety. So I was more able to achieve a few things and they start making you feel good about yourself. Oh, I, I have a, you know, I'm not completely worthless. And it, and the problem is that that, as we've just learned, if either of you were listening and you weren't, that is example of competence. And that is one of the three things that gives us the ability to self-motivate. And, and so achieving things, self-motivation, writing your own goals, self-authoring your own control requires you to have the things that you haven't got in the first place. So really, the stopping drinking reduced the self-motive, re re reduced the, the, the hatred a bit so I could get things done. And then the feelings of positivity from oh, that my. gave me more motivation. With meds, I feel I should add. And that cycle helped. 
you've got your hand in the air, Sam, but you haven't said anything. No, she's touching her ear. No. Ah, oh, my no, bad. No, no, I, no, was no. I was just... It, we all do things for negative external motivations. Sometimes we have to, don't we? Sometimes it's a useful thing. Oh, God, I'm going to absolutely bollocks. So I'll do that. Mm. But if we think back and go, that's the only time I achieve something, so I'm only going to be able to do that. That's the mistake. It's most things we do, we have they have to fit within our, our abilities and our, our performance and what we tend to do. And that's the way, really. That's how it works. Yeah, that's it. My tip is, don't Dirty. be an alcoholic. <laughs> I don't know. Forgot. It's, I find everything you just said really fucking annoying, largely because for years you've talked on very wankily about goals and values and all that stuff, and now it makes sense. And I'm finding it harder to be annoyed at you oh, because yeah, I understand yeah. now based on this theory about competence and valence, etc. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. And I just always thought, oh, you know, Jesus Christ, shuffle on talking about all this ridiculous stuff. But yeah, horribly, that seems to make sense. I have a mantra, you know, which is, which is that because of my ADHD, I don't get to regulate my brain and my choices much. And if I mm. can't control the impulses, if I can't control my thoughts, then I don't get to choose what to do. So I, am, I, I actually am lacking in free will almost. And, and free will is what makes us human. So by, by working on that, by working on choosing my impulses, choosing my control, feeling competent, feeling like I've got authority to, about myself, I actually, I'm actually developing control that is, mm. is ADHD. I'm developing free will, and that's quite important to me. I bet it is. Not free willy, but free will. I've never seen Do you like to develop some? You've not. It's a wonderful, oh, awful, I terrible haven't. old film. Yeah, but it involves an animal being... Uh, in captivation, any captivation, captivity, getting fish. everything wrong. Yeah. <laughs> now I know that that's a deliberate joke because you know it's a fucking mammal and you it's were waiting bear. for some kind of reaction. Right. Um, time for a game, Alex. It's, oh, sorry. I haven't just yeah. checked the time. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Sorry, but I'm podcast daddy and it's up to me. Um, you're on. losing 11 7 now for this season. Mm -hmm. Um so uh, I, I think this one, it's, it's a, just basically, it's a pick em, basically. We went on holiday to Lanzarote um, for a you know, two and a half day vacation. And normally my packing system helps me ensure I take what I need, but that packing system went out the window faster than Michael Jackson's baby. So what was it that I forgot to take for this trip to Lanzarote? Was it A, no T-shirts? Didn't take a single T-shirt. You forgot to take no T-shirts. I just, I afterwards, I immediately afterwards readjusted to say I the forgot to take a single T-shirt or something like it because I knew, I know you that well. I absolutely <laughs> knew what was coming. Al, I'll just put T-shirts. Yeah, T-shirts, yeah. Um, was it two, no pants, as in underpants, not the American um, explanation of trousers? I'll just put pants. Yes. Or was it uh, toi? Uh, nothing at all to charge my electrical devices. Uh, right. You forgot nothing at all to charge. I love the way I'm <laughs> purposely trying to wind you up. Uh, that is a really interesting one. Right then. I, I don't think it's either t-shirt and pants because you always buy a big dracula cloak when you're on holiday which says i heart lanzarote so it's you didn't take your electrical equipment sam didn't um which was the i suppose the well, let's take my laptop. i just didn't bring the charger i yeah, have to have a separate was... line in my list now that has each each charger listed because i'm such an idiot the option was no chargers yeah. For any of my electrical devices, not my electrical devices, Samantha. My God, how do I cope with you two? Anyway, you're wrong, Al. It was T-shirts. Didn't take any T-shirts. Had to find a place to buy some and actually did that relatively Shorts easy. Or sunglasses. Did you, what, did yeah, you buy like Garfield other... ones or something? <laughs> uh, kind of, but they were extra, extra large because I, I couldn't work out the sizing system. So they're a little bit big on me. But then again, I am a fat bastard. On that wonderful note, really it's 12 7 now. We're going to take a break while Alexa says it's time to take uh, Sam's HRT medication. 
and we'll be back in part three to answer some of your questions and this is not going well see you in a bit bye estrogen arms Welcome back to episode 161 of the ADHD adults. So on brand. <laughs> we, are, we are talking about ADHD and motivational. We were, we're just answering questions now. As always, in part three. Sam, have you got a question for many of our listeners, please, sir? Well, I haven't, but I have got a question to read out. It's from Anonymous. Someone the I have recently started. <laughs> Is that a group? Oh, the yeah. Hack, the hacking group. I don't think oh, yeah. it's from them. <laughs> okay. um, someone I have recently started dating has ADHD, four dates in. He is genuinely so lovely, and I can tell he is keen, as was I. But unfortunately, we are not compatible on other levels. What is the best way of calling this off? As I am aware of his RSD and want to be as sensitive as possible, what are the best words to use or how to approach it? Oh, that's a good question. It is. Now, I, what I'll say is that this question was asked a while ago, so this has probably already, <laughs> this happened. already but happened. When I was yeah. looking through the questions, I thought, fuck me, that is such an interesting and important question. Yeah. Mm. Um, I really hope they're not married because we didn't answer. I mean, <laughs> that they got married. That'd be... um, <laughs> they yeah. were just waiting on an answer from us. Well, I can't split up with him because they oh, still haven't yeah. responded. Yeah. <laughs> Guess I'm just um, going to have to marry him. Does anybody want to? I can start. Does anybody want to take it? Do you no, know? you go, please. So just oh, rip yes. the blaster off. What? I, yeah, I mean, kind of. There isn't a right and a wrong way to do. Well, there is a wrong way to do this, <laughs> but mm. the, at the end of the day, which is an awful phrase that people use when they don't know what to say and they're stalling to try and think up uh, something to say. <laughs> When you approach a situation like this, you have already, by considering the fact they have RSD and that you don't want them to feel hurt by this, done more than most people in most relationships with somebody ADHD that has ADHD do. You've already considered this, which is wonderful and beautiful. When Sam said rip the plaster off, it, you know, as an analogy, you could, to do something like that. So in other words, do it now, do it as soon as possible, do it as compassionately as possible do it honestly and do it within a safe framework explaining the reasons so kind of i was about to say don't ghost them but i ghosted sam three times um so yeah so actually provide providing an explanation and you know not a made up one but but explaining to them why this is happening that it's not that they're a bad person that you really do like them but there isn't the connection that you're looking for it's honesty within the context of using the kindest language you can that's probably the best thing i can come up with with very little thought either of you two want to add something yeah definitely honest that's really important and and giving an explanation i think is i i don't know because obviously i'm autistic as well so there's different things going on with me but i um yeah ghosting me was the absolute worst thing to do ignoring me is the absolute worst thing to do it destroys me sorry rim rimming did you I say rimming is the... I think you're doing it wrong, James. Yeah, well, I must be. Ghosting me. Yeah, and then you said rimming ignoring me. Ignoring is... me. No, ignoring me. Oh, ignoring. Okay, Ignoring Apologies. me is the <clears throat> worst <throat> thing ever. I cannot cope with that at all. It's I need to know the reasons why, and I need to know, and I need to know absolutely. So don't... Um, They're not this... breaking up with you. <laughs> <laughs> but actually no, this might think... be a great time for me to just... <laughs> <laughs> well while we're on the subject it's apropos <laughs> no but i think for me it needs to be clear communication i need to know that it's definitely over the reasons why and that it's uh, there's no going back I need mm -hmm. to be certain because otherwise I'll hold on to a tiny shred. Mm -hmm. But that just might be me. It might not be ADHD or autism. It might just be me personally. Mm. I think it's common. I do. Yeah. yeah. Um, can I add something from the other side, which is Please that ADHD do. people do not get a free pass on no pain. Yeah. It's all right. You know, that it's, it's the full mammalian experience, quite frankly. And, and when RSD really gets in our way, it's when we expect 
rejection that isn't going to come or we perceive it or we yeah. interpret wrongly. That's when it really gets in the way. When we're literally being rejected, yes, it's going to hurt, hurt anyone. Yeah. But that is life and it's gaslighting and it's yeah. dangerous. It's coercive. If someone tells you that they can't be rejected because it will hurt them too much, that is yeah. not okay. That's where we border into narcissistic personality disorders rather than dealing with ADHD. It, it, it isn't okay. You're not in charge of how people deal with an authentic yeah. rejection. That's your... so good. And you're so right because it's actually the imaginary rejection that hurts the most because it's that not knowing and torturing yourself with is this real or not I don't know is this going to happen or not I don't know but I think it's going to and I think they feel like this knowing how somebody feels makes it easier to get over I would imagine exactly yeah it it is that and 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 we most of my clients get over stuff when it happens to them and then they try not to put themselves in that position again even though they just experienced that they're fine with no yeah they're not fine with maybe or don't know they're yes. fine yes. with no we all yes. have to be that's that is life yeah yeah it's tough <clears throat> but give me yeah. a distraction and yeah, the alternative isn't it like i mean <laughs> staying with me <laughs> staying with james can you imagine <laughs> i Christ. fucking can <clears throat> anyway do you have a question for us alex yeah, also, uh, equally, you know, we, we, it's a uh, episode of Pathos today. This one's from Helen, <laughs> one big contradiction, 81. Hello. It's my nice. question. I'm genuinely interested to know, what is James's monthly budget on hair products? He has to keep that Jedward Quiff in top, top condition. <laughs> wow. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's a, free, isn't it? <laughs> the, there's something about one, Mary. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, the, yeah, the Jism Quiff. Um, well... I've just brought in anticipation of this a number of hair products that I currently use uh, to style oh my. my hair. And if you're not watching the video of this, I can't hold them all in one hand. And this is just ding! the stuff that's in the bathroom, ding. Not also the stuff ding. that's in my, in my go bag where there's another four. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different hair styling products because... And- and that's just, just Tuesday. That's just that's actually technically great it's question, right. Helen. Thank, Thank you. you Helen. It is <clears throat> it is a great question. I reckon probably about fifteen quid. <laughs> yeah. Although, what? although, yeah, although, although on, honestly, I'm very lucky and dirty. In the some days, I wake up and it's just like this, and I leave it. Yeah, you're good like that. I know. Well, dirty oh, like that because I don't wash my hair. Oh, it's because he sleeps upside down, wrapped in his own wings. That's uh, why he wakes up like it. Covered in <laughs> bat guano. Of course. <laughs> have you got a question James, for us, James? Do you have a question? Well done. Thank you. Thank you for both doing that at the same time. Yes, I oh, do. Yeah. This is from Dan. <clears throat> and Dan says, Hello, you beautifully imperfect people. Not sure if this Talking is a quick to you standalone too. question or a topic for a whole podcast episode, but what techniques, methods, and general advice can you suggest for meetings, both in person but especially online? To one, stay engaged and not get distracted and be not fidget and move around in brackets. That one's for Sam. (laughs) I'm going to go to Alex first because I know this is something that Alex, right from the start, back in the earliest episodes, would talk about when it came to meetings um, Mm. in terms of staying engaged. So fire away, balloon head. Yeah, just quick punchy answers, really. One is fidget and fucking move. We're allowed to. That doesn't hurt anyone else. Fuck them. There is inappropriate behavior with ADHD. That is inappropriate to society's heteronormative bullshit. Some Hmm. of our inappropriate behavior is inappropriate to our values and our needs. Stop those things. Don't stop that. I I am unmasking more and more my... Hmm. And and actually, I don't don't like fidgety either. I'm hyperkinetic. Go fuck yourself. I'm a grown man. Um, So that's the first thing I would say. Um, Second one is get an interruptions book. Best thing I ever did or a piece of paper, write down those interruptions. I write them in. I'm so desperate to say them. I'm so desperate to interrupt. And then when I read them afterwards, it says things like, I've got a black cat as well. (laughs) And for fuck's sake, sometimes they're useful. And honestly, if they're useful, they'll wait. But it's really Mm. helpful to write them down because it feels a bit like saying them. Um, I have the aims I want to achieve in that meeting written down on a piece of paper. And I have a big piece of paper that says, uh, honestly, I'm not kidding. Don't forget to shut the fuck up because that 
feeling of constantly talking it's always in me it always will be and so if i want to keep quiet if i want to maintain a silence on a topic and not overshare then i have to make a note of it so that actually i find online meetings are easier yeah never brought that note to a podcast recording have you to be fair be a, i'd like it if you did it. Ruin the point a little bit, wouldn't it? If we just sat there, just like nodding. It'd other. be more enjoyable for us, though. And, and it would just be full of you screeching and and saying shitters all the time. Um, I'll I'll go I'll go next anyway. So there's a couple of bits to this. I agree with some of the things that Alex said. I don't remember a lot of it. Well, I don't remember a lot of it. But the fidgeting thing is important because fidgeting actually helps us focus. It's not just yeah. the need to move. When you engage with a fidget toy um, or spinning your ring, ding, or whatever it is that helps you release that mental itch in your brain, it actually increases. Within that reason. It's Within a professional reason. meeting. <laughs> Very, well, some of them are. So actually... In terms of our approach to supporting people in meetings, we should be encouraged to fidget if it helps us focus. Mm. The staying engaged often involves mind wandering. This is something that I was just chatting to a coaching client recently, that 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 fear, particularly in longer meetings, that all of a sudden your mind just spontaneously goes off in a different direction. If this is an issue for you, there are approaches that can help. Summarizing can help, and it doesn't necessarily mean writing notes while people are talking, but every so often taking the opportunity to say so, just to summarize, yeah. and also, if you like, a mental version of narrative driving. We've talked about this before. Now, the reason for this is the brain has limited bandwidth, it's got all this storage capacity, but it can only do so many things at once. And if your mind is wandering, that's using up bandwidth. So if you are in a meeting and even internally are noticing things that people are saying and doing and having a narrative in your head, it uses up some of that bandwidth and it can help prevent mind wandering alongside preparing with things like mindfulness and relaxation techniques that can reduce anxiety, which can cause us to be more distracted. Sam. Well, God, I could go on for ages about this. So we'll... Don't. No, I won't really, but I will. Um, well, I Actually. used to do this. I used to, hang on, wrap my legs around each other like that and sit on my hands. That, <laughs> that's what I used to do to try and stop myself from fidgeting around. It, I don't think it was very successful, actually. I didn't realise until video meetings how much I moved around because obviously I couldn't see myself. I, I don't know if that's obvious. But I am in meetings. I am usually taking minutes. That helps me as long as I don't get distracted because I do get distracted. That's the point of this, isn't it, actually? The yeah. thing that I use now is things like this. I don't know if you can see it. No, we can. Oh, is it green? You can't because yeah. it's fucking green. Anyway, it's like, well, it's a scouring pad. It's a plastic scouring pad, but it's basically something to fidget with. That helps me to focus. Um, yeah. something I, I've talked about before that I used to use a lot was pain. So in meetings, I'd just be Don't do that. Mm. Yeah, no, I know. No, and no, you should no. never do that. But that's, and I still use it now, actually, all the time to try and keep me focused. No, no, but fidget yeah. toys like this really help me to stay focused. Taking minutes helps me as well because I've got to concentrate on what people are saying in order, because I want to summarize it. But I really liked what you, what else did I write down? Face cleaner. What? Um, I think that's your shopping list, Sam. Yeah, I think it is. I'll ignore <laughs> that. I obviously got distracted. <laughs> I'm <I've> something <laughs> completely unrelated. <laughs> Can I make one Clean last your edition? face, for God's sake. Mm. Yes, please do. When you summarise, if you're not the, ch the chair of the meeting, can I suggest you say, have I understood? Because telling people what they've said is can be distract, dis, like disruptive for them emotionally. Mm. Yeah. Like giving them the power and the permission to say no, you haven't is a really useful technique. So I would say, just because I'm because I because I've got Make ADHD, sure I don't always that. pay attention. Yeah. I drift off. If I understood this is what we've agreed, I mm. usually write it down and send it to people as well, so they can't bollock me later on when I obviously do something else. Yes, I like, and actually, if I'm not taking minutes for a meeting and it's just a one-on-one -on -one meeting that I'm chatting to, I've always got 
like the bottom half of the screen is always covered up by a little word document and i'm just typing away because it helps me to concentrate because i'm used to taking yeah. minutes I think it helps me to concentrate on what mm -hmm. they're saying and then I just kind of summarise it, and yeah, that really helps. I don't think you read the second part of the letter, did you? No, I was about I was about to say apologies to, to Dan because the yeah. second half said for years I was envious of people who seemed to stay present in boring meetings, and I thought there was something wrong with me with my diagnosis. I know that there is, but at least I know what, and I don't beat myself up about it. Loving yeah. the work, keep it up, ding, ding. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. and it's so accurate and, and also when you thought people were present in meetings if they probably were but if they were one of us they were just masking yeah and that's why we try and reduce the masking because it isn't healthy it just isn't no. exactly well my god that was bad that was episode 161 <laughs> of the adhd adults podcast where we talked I, I, I don't know, about adhd motivation amongst making lots of mistakes having to cut bits oh. out um, interrupting each other and doing more dings though we're back on our game with dings if you're still listening by now why um but you can send in questions and topic um suggestions via the website www.theadhcadults.uk see you next time bye 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 i was recording a body doubling video yesterday i thought no, no, just no. Quick... hang on hang on alex didn't do his goodbye You've instantly gone into, you've instantly gone into before he went, by all, you, you, your monologue. Oh, oh. Sorry. Bye all. Now do it. I thought I'd do a quick 10 minute body doubling video yesterday. Just started recording and then had a, a meltdown. I, well, I, I I felt it coming on and thought I can suppress this. Thought I'd suppressed it and then had a meltdown. Threw just loads of shit all over the kitchen. Screamed, banged doors, threw shit, smashed shit up, and then cried on the floor for a while. And then had to um yeah apologize. And then and then luckily not luckily but. Because one, some of the things that are thrown were apples and peaches. And when I thrown them, they just smashed to bits and all bits have gone in the cat's uh, food bowls. And then that made me laugh. So it kind of eventually, after about an hour or so, it brought me out of it, which was wonderful. Um, yeah, so that was my 10-minute body doubling video. And I've been trying all fucking day to edit it. And I don't know what to do with it. Because I think it might be useful for people, but... I'm just talking now. <laughs>